This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Sean's out at the Jeep Design Studios today looking at some future Jeeps, so I'm filling in. China's Academy of Sciences announced a breakthrough in solid-state batteries. Car News China reports that scientists created a flexible solid-state battery that withstood 20,000 repeated bends. And for those of you who understand the chemistry of these things, the battery is made from polymer molecules, ethoxy groups, and electrochemically active short sulfur chains. It also has a composite cathode with an embedded polymer electrolyte that increases the energy density to 86%. The new battery is still in the research stage and probably has several years to go before it's ready for mass production, but solid state batteries could be a game changer for electric vehicles, and this breakthrough could bring them one step closer to reality. Automakers always plan for what they call black swan events, something unpredictable that comes straight out of the blue and causes massive disruption. Well, production of the Ford F-150 just got hit by a major black swan event. Ford buys most of its aluminum sheets from Novellus, and it just had a massive fire at a plant in New York that will cripple production until early next year. Ford is the biggest user of aluminum from that plant, and it's scrambling to find other sources. But it's not just Ford. Around a dozen other automakers get aluminum from Novellus, which supplies about 40% of the metal to the U.S. auto industry. Those automakers will likely have to turn to imported aluminum, which now carries a 50% import, import tariff. And the Trump administration sure does love those tariffs. Now it's going to slap 25% import tariffs on medium and heavy-duty trucks. And that's got GM and Ford together in a lobbying battle against Stellantis. Light-duty trucks have had a 25% tariff since 1964, but it did not apply to mediums and heavy duties. Ford currently makes its bigger trucks in the U.S., though it is tooling up a plant in Canada to make them. General Motors makes most of them in the U.S., but import some of them from Canada and Mexico, while Stellantis makes them all in Mexico. Stella wants some sort of exemption from the tariff, but GM and Ford say that would put their U.S.-made trucks at a disadvantage. Last year, the U.S. imported over $20 billion of medium and heavy-duty trucks, mostly from Mexico and Canada. So we're going to have to wait and see how the Trump administration settles this, but for now, that tariff starts on November 1. Later today, Tesla is supposedly going to release the details on a cheaper version of the Model Y, with speculation suggesting it's going to have a $30,000 price tag. That's going to be big news, but the company also just released a significant upgrade to its full self-driving stack. Called FSD14, it adds a bunch of features that come straight out of the company's experience with its robo-taxis. For example, it will automatically pull over for emergency vehicles like fire trucks and police cars. It can handle blocked roads and detours that come up in real time. It will automatically clean off camera lenses. But most importantly, it will now handle point-to-point -point delivery, including parking, as long as the driver is engaged and ready to take over. Elon Musk has been promising autonomous driving for an awfully long time, and FSD14 seems to be the closest thing to making that a reality. At CSP, we work with OEM engineers across the country on their journeys to lighter, safer, and more eco-friendly vehicles. Learn more at thecsp.com. The Trump administration caused an uproar when it arrested and expelled 475 foreigners setting up the equipment at LG Energy's battery plant near Savannah, Georgia. LG Energy vehemently denies that those workers, who were overwhelmingly from South Korea, were in the United States illegally. In fact, most of them are now being let back in to finish their work. But the U.S. isn't the only country that's skittish about foreign workers. 
Spain is in an uproar. Over 2,000 Chinese workers that CATL brought into the country to set up a battery plant. It also set off concerns in the European auto industry that it's becoming too dependent on China. All we can say is that 2,000 workers is sure a lot of people. They're not just going to set up that plant. They're going to build the whole thing. And for a lot of people in Spain, that is just too much. Germany is giving its auto industry some extra relief. Government officials who are alarmed at the automotive jobs that Germany is hemorrhaging are planning on extending a tax exemption for new electric vehicles until 2035. EV sales are lower than expected and stiff competition in the EV market is leading to thousands of job cuts. The German auto industry is expected to lose 100,000 jobs by the end of the decade. But German automakers want more than just EV subsidies. They're also demanding that the EU roll back its 2035 ban on internal combustion engines. One automotive executive told Autoline that the ban would end up handing half the European market over to Chinese automakers. Nissan is leaning on its partnership with Renault to launch a new SUV in India. The model is called the Tecton, and its styling is inspired by the larger Patrol, or what's also known as the Armada. While the Tecton will not be fully revealed until next year, we know that it's based on a shared platform between Renault and Nissan, which is used for other vehicles like the Dacia Duster. You might also remember us reporting on an innovative new hybrid powertrain with a 48-volt motor and a two-speed gearbox for that model. No word yet on whether that will power the Tecton, but there's a wide range of powertrain options for that platform. Renault will also produce the new Nissan SUV at its plant in India before sales kick off next year. The two automakers used to jointly share that plan, but Renault bought out Nissan's 51% at the beginning of August, calling the move part of its ambition to make India a key pillar of its growth. Aerofugia, the aviation division of Chinese automaker Geely, is showing off its first eVTOL, or electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. It's called the AE200 and can hold six passengers. It's got a range of 200 kilometers or about 124 miles. Aerofugia says the model is the first eVTOL in China and the second globally to successfully complete full tilt rotor transition flight tests. That's where an aircraft takes off vertically like a helicopter transitions to horizontal fixed wing flight and then lands vertically again using a single rotatable tilt rotor system for the entire maneuver. Aerofugia says the next step is to start manned flight testing in its effort to receive full-scale certification. And that brings us to the end of today's report, but before we sign off, I want to send out a personal shout out to all our members who contribute to keep out of line going. Your support is really making a difference, and it helps keep us on our mission to help everyone get a better picture of what's going on in the global automotive industry. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. CSP, the Composites Solution Partner. Intrepid Control Systems. Over-the-air engineering, boost your game. And thanks to the following YouTube and Patreon members. Knowing that a little rain won't slow down your day. That's what really matters. Bridgestone Toronza Quiet Track Tires. Confident control in wet conditions. Hi, I'm Don Hatfield from Intrepid Control Systems, and I'm presenting the wireless BMS solution from Intrepid Control Systems. Uh, come and see us in this demo at booth 4600 at the Battery Show. And also analog devices will be there as well. We'd be happy to talk to you and help you with your solution. Thank you.